This presentation on SAGE, originally the software for algebra and geometry experimentation created by William Stein, has been prepared for KiwiPyCon 2010, the annual meeting of the New Zealand Python user group. My name is John Graves. I became aware of SAGE through a posting by Michelle Paul to the Python EduSig mailing list. The posting contained a link to a paper published and presented using SAGE at the 2010 California Mathematics Council South Conference in Palm Springs. SAGE is a free open source mathematics software system that aims to provide an alternative to big name commercial math packages. It's possible to try it online or download it. If you download it, you can run a local server with the command notebook. This makes the system more responsive for me. Paul's paper opens with this 3D interactive Yoda, which running in a browser really grabs your attention. Sage has a lot of wow factor, as you'll see in the next few minutes. Paul also points to some other resources relating to using Python in mathematics education. There's Maria and Gary Litvin's 2010 book Mathematics for the Digital Age and Programming in Python 2nd Edition with Python 3. And here's a pioneering post from Kirby Erner from February 2000. Sage is not unique in offering Python interaction in a browser. Crunchy is another project aimed more specifically at Python programming tutorials. But let's jump right in and see what Sage has got. If we evaluate the directory command, Sage dumps this long list of mathematical names. If we just check the length of this list, 1,840 names, you get a quick idea of how big a toolbox Sage offers. We'll only touch on a few of the tools in this short introduction. Sage offers tab completion, so press D and tab to see all the names starting with D. Even better, you can add a question mark to see specific documentation. Sage contains or wraps other open source mathematics packages from algebra to statistics. So let's look at some math. Sage treats fractions as rational numbers. Note the automatic simplification of 3 fifteenths to 1 fifth here. Fractions as variables carry their type. To get the numerical equivalent, use the function n. For algebra, we can define x as a symbolic variable with the var function. Then write an equation using that variable and solve for it. This makes it very easy to experiment. Note how increasing the right-hand side by 4 here increases x by 2. Or, if we have x on both sides, the solution still pops out. Solve is just one of many operations on expressions. To find more, we type expression, period, and tab. And again, the question mark tells us what the operation does. Note that solve in the expression namespace is for univariate expressions. Let's try factor, which works for multivariate expressions. Sure enough, x minus y times x plus y is x squared minus y squared. Solve as a function works with linear equations. Here we've got x plus y equal to 4 and 2 times x plus y squared equal to 11 being solved for x and y. Because y was squared, we get two solutions, which satisfy both equations. Suppose now we want to graph these two equations. We can solve for y. First for x plus y equal to 4, then for the other equation. Now we can make a plot for 4 minus x over the range from negative 2 to 7. Y is 4 when x is 0, so that checks out. For additional lines, we just add plots. This next one should only go up to 5.5, and we'll color it red. The third plot is for the negative square root. And there you are. The lines intersect at 5, comma, minus 1 and 1, comma, 3, the solutions we saw before. Sage also supports plotting with interaction. Here we'll explore a linear function of x, a plot of mx plus b 
for x between negative 2 and 7. Using the interact decorator, we define a function underscore which specifies our two interactive variables with their minimum, maximum, and step values, and a call to show our plot. This graph goes all the way down to negative 30. To get the axes of the graph to stay fixed and the dimensions along both axes to be the same, we can add these min, max, and figure size parameters to the plot. Now when we bring b, the y-intercept, up to 4, and m, the slope, up to minus 1, we get the line we saw before, 4 minus x. Sage can plot 2D geometry. This unit circle with center at the origin and radius of 1 will be blue, and again we make sure the x and y dimensions are uniform. Sage can also plot in 3D. Here is the same circle, lifted one unit in the Z dimension. Sage supports latex output and has a conversion function to produce latex from Sage expressions. If you look at the definition of standard deviation here as we switch in Sage from the worksheet to the Edit tab, you can see the latex code embedded between dollar signs starting with backslash square root. The Edit tab allows for literate programming. This idea of having documents which contain code, reversing the usual relationship between code and comments. Here we've defined a function called derivatives, which returns a function, and that function's first, second, and third derivatives. So we're doing calculus now. Again, this kind of thing makes experimentation trivial. Change from x cubed to x squared. Change to sine of x. But let's look at this in the context of a math paper. Here's another paper by Michelle Paul on generating the rational numbers. We can edit it, which allows us to evaluate the code. The median function makes a new fraction from the sum of numerators over the sum of the denominators of two fractions. We can evaluate that for 2 sevenths and 5 elevenths. The paper goes on to make a series of observations. It's great stuff. But what if we could make the presentation even more interactive? This screen shows a script from the Open Allure project, the subject of my PhD research. Notice how it includes hypertext links to anchor tags within the web document. Let's edit the text of Paul's paper and add these hypertext anchor nodes, average and ferry. The script will now walk and talk through the Sage worksheet using text-to-speech, which sounds like this. Here is Michelle Paul's Sage worksheet on generating the rational numbers. A median sums the numerators and denominators of two fractions. We skip to the section where the median is discussed as a kind of average. And then the section on far a sequences. The script can include longer descriptions and pauses for worksheet interaction to take place. Here's a sample of that. This script will pause while talking through a Sage worksheet. The Ford circle function returns a circle resting on the x-axis at n, where n is a rational number. The radius is 1 over 2 times the denominator squared. The circles function shows a graph of the Ford circles. For each rational number in the list L. Finally, the rational number generator function generates an expanded list of rational numbers to be graphed with each call. Try calling the function with r dot next several times to see the result. This is the pause point in the script 
Following some signal that interaction is finished, the script continues. Pretty cool, isn't it? All this interaction is aimed at improving on existing tutorials, such as the famous Dive into Python by Mark Pilgrim. Here's one of his numbered line explanations, copy-pasted into a Sage layout. When you consider how this makes the Python code come alive, it takes the lesson to a new level of ease of use. For more information about OpenAllure, please visit openallureds.org. For more information about Sage, go to sagemath.org.